Good morning again, and uh, thank you all for joining us this morning. My name is Ben Nemser. I'm the president of Nemo Electronics. We're here today to talk about some cleaning techniques for fiber optic cables used in broadcast as well as audio video and other related applications. We have uh, an interesting program, which Danny Ritz, our VP of engineering is gonna present to you. He's uh, one of the most knowledgeable and experienced people in this market, uh, in this country, uh, probably in the world, we'll go for that. And a lot of the benefit of this uh, seminar is the option for you to ask any questions that you have. If they're um, short questions, we'll have time during the presentation. If not, we'd welcome you to uh, submit them to us, call us on the phone or send an email, and we'd certainly be happy to hear from you. So what we're gonna do, uh, this is a, a rather brief presentation. We're gonna see a, um, a short video of our plant. We're then gonna present a couple of PowerPoint slides showing some of the different uh, fiber optic cables that you're probably familiar with, maybe some that you're not. And then Danny will give a demonstration. We'll go over uh, briefly again, the discrete uh, fiber connectors as well as some of the specialized ones. So with that, I will um, start our video. our Brazil office. We also do copper cables. There's still a lot of those around. Machining insulators. That's a planetary cabler. That's a particular machine that we designed and built to make uh, fiber and hybrid cables. There's braiding on the SEMTI cable. Final extrusion. And SEMTI termination. Don't try that at home. That's the actual uh, Limo SEMTI connector fi fixture. You'll see that demo of the video scope and the finished product, the optical con product. Fiber polishing. And that's our plant. If you do get to Miami, we would um, be happy to give you a tour. We'll go into our uh, brief PowerPoint presentation. So we're going to talk today about the different types of fiber cables in broadcast and AV. We'll look at some of the basic cleaning procedures, first for the discrete connectors, then for the optical con connectors, then for the Limo SEMTI connectors. And again, this is a very brief demo. We have specific presentations that focus on each of these individually because there are a lot, of, uh, a lot of different variations. So the cables we use in broadcast come in many different shapes, sizes, and colors. Each one of them has particular types of cleaning procedures and, and tooling. Basically, the fiber is a very, very small piece of glass. In the case of single mode, it's a nine micron core. That's uh, nine millionths of a meter surrounded by 125 micron cladding and then some other coatings over that. The smallest thing you normally see is the 900 microns, which would be the colored coating. So just imagine that a one hundredth of that size is what's in the middle. And you can imagine how much dirt it takes to have an impact. In fact, a single dirty fiber 
uh, somewhere in the connection in a broadcast studio or installation can impact the entire system performance. Now, normally it's not that drastic, but uh, the accumulation of dirt on contact after contact has a massive impact if you don't take care of these things. So here are some of the discrete ones. We'll look at the uh, 1.25, which would be the LCs on the right, and the 2.5 millimeter. Those are the diameters of those ferrules. And that's very important when you purchase any type of cleaning tools, test equipment, termination equipment. It always depends upon that actual diameter of the ferrule and they're different. And the broadcast, in fact, like the Limo that you're looking at now, has a two millimeter ferrule. So it's in between the two standard sizes, which means you might even need three sets of tooling uh, and cleaning equipment. The optical con is something else that's become very, very popular in our world. There's three different versions of that, either with fiber only or with fiber and copper for SEMTI. And we'll look briefly at what we do to keep those things clean. Although they do have nice, uh, nice caps and dust shutters and they help a lot, but they are not by any means a complete solution. Now, for those of you who may have heard of expanded beam and those who haven't, this is an interesting, um, an interesting design feature in certain types of fiber connectors. It's not that common in our industry. It's more common in uh, military, oil and gas, and some industrial applications. But basically, everything that we work with on a day-to-day -day basis uses a direct physical contact of ferrule to ferrule. That's the top part of the slide. And you can see the ferrule, which would be the 2.5 millimeters with that nine microns going through the middle. And they actually uh, physically touch which is a very, very efficient transmission of light, but it's also a very efficient transmission of dirt. So anything that you do to one end, when you uh, touch another surface, it's gonna transmit that. And Danny's gonna show you, it's really amazing when you see those things. What the expanded beam does is it uses a system of lenses and mirrors to actually protect and prevent the two surfaces from touching. So you pay a big price in terms of the weight, the size, the cost, and a lot of attenuation, but you make it up in certain applications by being very easy to clean and uh, not as easy to damage the, the surface. So it is critical to keep all these connectors clean. And uh, there are a number of things that you can do both to check as well as to actually do the cleaning and test. The inspection probe is one of the most useful pieces of equipment. These come in many different models. We uh, have the Lightel, which is what we use. We also sell them if you would like to buy one, but they're a USB probe. Danny's gonna give a, a really good demo and they come with different tips for the different sizes of ferrules that you use. So when you look at these fiber uh, end surfaces under great magnification, these are some of the things that you see of course, you want to see the upper right-hand corner, but more often than not, you're going to see either some dirt or some evidence of damage or some evidence of uh, issues in manufacturing. And it can be any one or a combination of those. We're going to focus on the dirt today, and you'll see a bunch of different uh, presentations of that. So many, many things we use to keep these uh, connectors clean. This is a typical cleaning kit. You can buy cleaning kits, as I said, for all the different diameters, as well as with specialized tooling. You can see that this particular kit has a Limo alignment sleeve tube. And if you're cleaning Limo SEMPTI connectors, you are going to need to remove that alignment sleeve to actually reach the surface of that ferrule to properly clean it. So that's something that would come in that kit that you might not need if you're doing other types of connectors. And these click pens are available for all the different ferrule sizes. We'll give you a demo of that. They're really a, a great, great uh, tool to use. So with that, I'm gonna turn over the presentation to Danny. And again, um, feel free to ask whatever questions you have uh, at the end. And if you think of something later, uh, please give us a call. Uh, Danny? Hey, hello, everybody. Uh, let's see if I can get my video in the spotlight here. Okay. Um, hopefully, everybody hears me. Yes. Good. All right. Uh, my name's Danny, and I've been doing this all of my life, literally. Um, 
We're going to focus on predominantly hybrid connectors, but I'm going to give you a basic background um, on conventional connectors. Your, you know, Sam Tom, Sam Charlie, Lima Charlie. And you'll notice I say things every uh, are phonetically. I think that's important because S T S C L C F C all sound alike on the phone, um, and it great causes great confusion. So I suggest you get in the habit as well of using phonetics when discussing connect uh, fiber connectors. Um, we're going to uh, point the camera down because there's no point in looking at me. I'd rather show you the product and then we'll bounce in and out of this camera to a video scope, which is being fed by USB. Point this down, that's the video scope. Okay, let's talk about conventional connectors um, like the Sam Charlie um, or like the Lima Charlie. These are very much alike. This is a 1.25 and this is 2.5 um, feral sizes. Um, in uh, the cleaning world, everything will evolve around these two until you get to hybrid style connectors. Um, my favorite cleaning option for both of these is a click pin. Now, um, each of these is designed around a particular tip, and in this case, a 2.5 millimeter slides on one snap. And yes, it is nothing more than string. So if you've been exposed to this, this is basically like dental flossing a, a, a contact. Um, it is pulling string directly across the tip of the contact um, on center where the fiber is out uh, located. Uh, because the relationship, think about this, in the center core of this piece of glass, there is a nine millionth aperture of glass with a 125 micron hole that it passes through. But yet this is 2.5. Uh, uh, millimeters in diameter. So it is a really, really small hole. Um, so it don't take much strain to, to clean it up. So, um, and in the case of a, a 1.25, you would actually have a smaller hole to keep it on center and align it. And with the Semti Hybrid, the same thing applies, except for it is actually a 2.0 um, hole and tip, which is much more common um, to the military world. So, um, I'm going to switch in and out of cameras here. Let me take a conventional uh, fiber connector. Um, I'm going to show you the surface of it and explain to you what you're in for for not owning one of these. Uh, bear with me as I bounce in between video inputs. Uh, do, 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 lights help. Okay, so when you're looking at a video scope, um, and yes, this is a well-used product, so you'll see little scars and everything else. I can't keep opening a brand new pack of connectors every time. Um, the tiny little dot luminant in the middle is actually your glass. The rest of that is, is um, the 125 micron buildup. And way out on the edge of that is a little bit of epoxy that holds all that together. The white area surrounding it with a little bit of scar material, that's the zirconian. That is a huge portion of this thing. So in relationship between the two, it is very, very small. Um, so I'm going to point out how so little of it is going to make it dirty. So let me back this off and give you an impression about how quickly this all can take place. Come on. I have no idea how I did that. Okay, so just merely touching the surface of a contact can be an, a game changer. Um, that, that's just what came off my hands and I was under the impression my hands are clean and I've been washing my hands a lot. In this case, you see you know, large deposits of oil, grease, skin matter, sloth, you name it. Um, had one of those gone across the core and we're fortunate that it didn't, it could cause you a couple of dB of attenuation. Um, you can wipe it down, there's several processes and they bounce back to the uh, input here. Um, I'm going to demonstrate the one click first. Okay. This is literally, I keep calling it one click so it's coined that way, but it's a click cleaner. So in this case, I'm just going to click it once. I may get lucky. I may not. Um, but it's for demonstration purposes to say, wow, you can make a big difference with just a piece of string. So yes, if I had hit that twice, I would have probably improved its overall cleanliness. But, uh, let's discuss that for a moment. Um, if you by chance don't own one of these, I am completely happy with the use of Chem Wipes. 
Um, I am completely happy with non-woven fabrics that are produced by uh, uh, Stickler. Um, when I say non-woven fabric, it's just a, a type of material, but it is a very good, like a lens cleaner, um, which I'm sure some of you camera operators are familiar with. But uh, using a accelerant, quick drying alcohol, or a conventional 90% um, or better, as high as you can get, quick drying alcohol is great. Um, a simple dab of it, wipe, one direction, always, preferably, uh, and then a dry will yield wonderful results. Um, Stickler also makes these um, like reverse Q-tip concept. It is a um, fibrous material that is inside of a tube. Uh, this is for any exposed two and a half inch ferrule or even do 1.25 ferrule. And basically you can rub the surface of a contact, uh, preferably in a wet dry, wet dry combination to basically scrub the end of the contacts. Um, this plays an important role if you need to reach inside connectors, which I'm going to demonstrate in a moment. But this particular one would also work on a 1.25 ferrule to basically rub it down. Again, always rotating in the same direction. Um, and I usually bounce between wet, dry, wet, dry. Now, um, be now that I've mentioned this particular piece, I also want to point out that it is available as an any as well. So an any meaning that it would uh, pass through I don't know, some type of of union if you needed to do a receptacle. In this case, this is a Frank Charlie, and it would give me the ability to reach the receptacle and actually scrub the surface of the contact um, that is behind uh, the receptacle that I can't actually get to in those cases. So Now, these tools are imperative if you're going to get into hybrid style cleaning. And in this case, this is a Neutrik um, Neutrik does make a tool for getting access to those two particular contacts down inside, which are basically LC contacts. Um, it is a tool um, that snaps over the end of the connector, turning the two into tubes um, that give you the ability to, once again, use some type of uh, cleaner, stick cleaner, to reach down inside and rub the surface of the contacts or actually use a one click for penetration down through the center of those contacts. Um, I'm uh, partial um, to simply taking the head off and treating them as LCs. So, and I'll bet most of you don't own this particular tool. So I'm going to demonstrate how to take the head off of this quickly. Now, this is a wavy washer. It has uh, um, indentations and this back nut has teeth. So it is imperative that you retract this washer and that spring and rotate the back nut. You will not be able to do it otherwise and unless you force it and tear the teeth off. So after you've exposed all of the threads, you simply back this nut up and pull the head forward. Pay attention to the writing up and the large polarizing key and you'll remember how to put it together. Now you've got a pair of LC contacts. Same exact approach. You can either hand wipe these down or use a click tool that would simply slide over the end, snap, snap. You would switch over to um, the tip, in this case a 1.25 uh, tip, would be put onto the fiber scope to visually inspect it. Then you would simply reinstall this large polarizing tab, writing up, slide this on till it bottoms out, then bring the back nut up. You'll get a couple of clicks out of it, click, 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 and then back this up so it relieves the pressure um, that uh, is on the spring or it'll make mating this difficult. Um, you should always proof check this by mating it to an active receptacle. Don't send them out into the field. It has caused me a great deal of grief um, doing so. Of course, I don't have a receptacle to demonstrate it with. Um, in my hands, but you would seat this and verify that it does lock. If not, you have to re uh, unassemble this and reassemble this until it works uh, proof positive. The same exact concept works on optical con quad. Optical con quad um, is four contacts. Look, excuse me, the head's on the wrong one. It's two contacts in this case. Oh. Let me ratify this real quick. No. Oh. But uh, that's multi-mode, by the way. But an optical con quad basically has four contacts, and the exact same procedure uh, would take place in this case, and you would reassemble it in exactly the same manner. And I don't have one. No.
Bear with me. Troubleshooting reassembly. Oh, because I'm mixing up the wrong head. Next, the Limo. Oh. Limo contacts um, are two millimeter. And in the case of a boy and a girl, the girls are exposed, they're two, two millimeter, and the boy connector, the two contacts are behind the lineman sleeve. In either case, you can use a tool a click cleaner that is specific to a two millimeter that would give you the ability to reach down over the contact snap to clean it and also give you the ability to reach down inside unlike any other way of doing this with a hand tool but to actually put on a the alignment sleeve or excuse me the uh tip specific to two point zero to visually inspect those two contacts down inside this connector. Um, in the case of the male, you would have to remove the alignment sleeves. This is done by taking the tool specific to this connector and threading it over the alignment sleeve and pulling. The alignment sleeve is threaded on one side specific for that purpose. Um, you could conceivably reach down through an alignment sleeve, but I don't suggest it. But after you've removed the alignment sleeve, now you've got an exposed two millimeter contact that gives you the ability to, again, reach down over with the pin, snap, snap to clean it. Um, reinstalling that is just a reverse of the operation. You would thread the tip on, reach down inside, press it till you feel a snap, unthread it, and voila, you're done. Oh. Um, I think this is a good stopping point to transition into a question and answer session. Um, I'd rather leave that open since we have quite a few people. Um, so I'm going to pause right now um, and see if anybody has any questions specific to anything that I just demonstrated. You can unmute your microphone and ask any anytime. Danny, uh, what was, is your suggestion as to how often you should clean fiber connectors? Um, personally, I would clean them before I use them and then after I use them. And I would also, more importantly, clean the other persons. Um, if I were to go to a venue, I would not plug my connector into their connector um, without inspecting theirs, cleaning theirs, cleaning mine, then mating the two. And then I would unplug mine, clean it, and put it away. Um, assuming that I'm not the person who's going to use it next and that person's not diligent enough to clean it. So I would clean it every time. Um, you can't clean enough. Anything that touches another contact is going to cause transference. Um, all contacts are positively engaged, spring-loaded, mashed together. So if there's anything on one, it's instantly transferred to the other. So along the lines of cleaning, cleaning should be an always and everyday event. Um, anytime you unplug something, um, it is prone to getting garbage on it. And every time you plug it back in, it's going to leave the garbage behind. So the, and, and if, you, if you basically put oils on a contact, plug it together, you're baking them on. Um, they will be so much harder to remove at that point. Um, you, you were given an opportunity when it was fresh to keep, get to easily remove it. However, leaving it on there, it builds up like plaque and becomes extremely difficult to remove. So, Danny, yes. can, at, uh, can you overdo this by cleaning? I mean, just by time and utilization and getting on site and getting off site and going back on site and uh, using this in the AV world, uh, can you overdo it? I would say that if I was in a, a, a high precision environment where I had a couple of patch cords that were my major backbone, um, I would be uh, limiting my uh, amount of times I plugged and unplugged it or cleaned it simply due to, to abrasion that, uh, that occurs on the contact. But along the lines of everyday patch cords, no. Leaving the dirt on is 10 times worse than the abrasion that you're going to cause. The materials that this, the cleaning materials are, are made of um, are softer than the zirconian, but it give or take on the glass. I've actually seen the glass look like it's been over cleaned. But 
it, it is nothing compared to what the dirt will do attenuation wise. So the answer is no. I've got cables that have been out in the field 15 years, have been uh, cleaned a million times and are still averaging less than one dB. So um, no, I think cleaning is more important and I would not concern myself with over cleaning. Um, unless I was playing around with receptacles on real uh, precision test equipment, that would concern me. I would try to flush those. But along the lines of my field cables, nah, I would rub those down. I would beware <laughs> weird foreign substances or materials that are not intended for cleaning um, as they can cause a great deal of scratching, micro scratching, that you're actually only going to see by looking at it under a video scope. Does well, that answer your question? I, I, yes, it does. Yes, it does. And and I guess, you know, sometimes because I have multiple technicians using these at times and and if it's not going to work, you know, if it's not working, then their first response is to go ahead and clean it. Let's make sure that it's working. But I assure you that uh, when I'm on site or in the middle of a hotel or a venue that uh, I've got multiple backups. So it's like, you cover your ass. Oh yeah, definitely. And, and, and make sure you have plenty, plenty of plenty of backup to uh, to assure that you got a success. No time, yeah. no time to go look for stuff. Yep, I, I agree with you there. I would lay out two separate paths for any fiber feed and have redundant connectors to deal with. I've had something work and then just quit working because somebody stepped on it and I didn't catch them doing that. So I've seen it happen. But along lines of them, are they visually inspecting them before they clean them? Or are they just no. Well, I'm having a problem. No, 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 no. We don't have a visual inspection. Uh, you know, we have caps. We have make sure that we have attachment caps. Right. To go with every, uh, every, every sample that we have. I mean, I go into multiple venues that are using your uh, Sam Charlies and your uh, ver the various. I mean, they're right. uh, Lima Charlies and Sam Charlies. And, uh, and I wanted to ask that question about that, but, um, so I've, I've got a whole case of nothing but multiple lengths and multiple options. So, but they don't have time to inspect. They are basically gonna take what I've got, take the cap off, put it in, in hopes that the, it gets used and it gets used properly and it. Yeah, it, it is a common practice. I mean, we sell clear tethered caps yes. um, because the guy, the best they can do is to light them up real quick. They yeah. pull out a TAC-12, they pass some light through it, they go, okay, I got, 12 passing light let's go use it um rather than you know go to the lay something out to find out four of them don't pass light anymore so it's a it's a it's a it's a benefit to have clear caps yeah, um no, some no of question. the other ones don't actually pass light when you you send it down it but no i understand that you don't per se have the time but owning a video scope and being able to sit down in the shop on a regular basis and give everything a good once over is a good investment i i yeah. I, I, I think your clear caps, one. certainly your clear caps are, are the better way to go. Yeah. Uh, the rubber ones and the free, the, uh, when you first buy them, they come as just single caps. You know, those sort yeah. of get tossed and uh, tossed and get, the others get attached immediately. So I've got something to always go to. Yep. Yeah, I've completely abandoned um, some of the black rubber caps due to their breakdown over time and actually leaving behind debris. Um, when I see them in the field, I give them a little rub test and if they feel like they're porous or they're get sloughing off, I tell people I would get rid of them um, and I pull out a video scope and show them how much debris is left behind by their dust cap, by their protection cap per se. So um, the harder plastics tend not to slough off over time. So in uh, hi, this question. Is, oh, sorry. question, and that is uh, in, in different kinds of uh, either SC or LCs or um, has anybody uh, with the STs, Toms, uh, Sam Toms, um, it, it seems like my, uh, my industry, the, uh, um, the AV industry sort of started out with STs and they, uh, when you're looking at a patch bay that's already been installed by somebody else in other locations, uh, it seems SCs are becoming more dominant. And I'm, and I'm just wondering your opinion on when you decide to use which type in what scenario. Um, 
I, I, I prefer the Sam Tom simply because it's hardy. Okay, it's a hardy connector. It's metal. We can step on it and get away with it. Um, it is an exposed sleeve. It's easy to terminate and easy to clean. However, if because the the um, locking nut, the the keeper itself is the spring loaded mechanism, it is prone to attenuation when it's bent. Um, this connector, the Sam uh, Charlie, once it's positively engaged, it has less variances in attenuation and performance when it's bent at the back. So um, there is an advantage to that. However, you step on this, it's junk. So I'm not a big fan of the Sam Charlie. I'm a much bigger fan of that. The, uh, one of the reasons we, we transitioned out of the Sam Tom, we were seeing more and more of you know, the SFPs um, you know, uh, in the Sam Charlie, now the Lima Charlie, um, and it's just basic laziness. Um, the device itself, if it, it, it's ported out as a, a Lima Charlie, can easily be converted to a Sam Charlie or an ST with a patch cord. I don't, I don't plug into devices. If I owned a rack full of fiber DAs or SFPs, um, the last thing I would do would be plugging into my active device. I would always have a fusible link. So I would immediately, and I've done this with several operators, is port them out. I would plug in an LC and I'd end up with an ST or a Sam Charlie, um, Sam Tom or Sam Charlie on a patch bay. Um, and this would be my sacrificial fusible link. I would never plug into the devices. I wouldn't want to uh, have to clean them. Um, I would want to easily throw away a patch cord that was gummed up. But if I had a choice, um, I would stick with the Sam uh, Tom. Sam Toms appear at my venues. I don't know about your hotels as much, but all the stadiums I go to, and I frequent several of them, um, this is all we find um, for the single mode world for broadcast is the Sam Tom. Sam Charlies do exist in, in some AV closets. They do exist on the multi-mode side or, or the IT people side, as well as the, the Lima Charlies. But in the broadcast world, we design around Sam, Sam Tom. So I don't have a preference other than durability, and I'll take a Sam Tom any day of the week. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody else have any questions? Uh, yeah, one question. How much bigger would you say are the problems of dirt in ten, with 10 gig compared to 1 gig? How much? What is it again? How much, how much more problems do you have with dirt on 10 gig links versus 1 gig links? No, no. On fiber? Um, fiber is, isn't like that. Um, I can get away with murder as long as I got a clean connector, 100 gig, 10 gig, 25 gig, even some weird 40 gig um, stuff. That hasn't been the problem as much. If, we, if it's dirty, it's dirty, and we have attenuation. It's not like copper where we're reaching a back reflection, a long cumulative effect of multiple connectors, um, you know, a frequency limitation due to diameter of, of the copper. Um, when it comes to glass, um, I pretty much, if it's, if it's a good connector, it's 100% to 100 gig. That's been my personal experience. I haven't had to go back and, and goose them along and improve their, their appearance just to buy, buy you know, uh, a couple of tenths of a dB to get the performance. It was either there or it's not. And the, the, the benefit is, in the broadcast world is that we're actually getting more and more budget for, for light law than we had before. So in the beginning, I had six to eight cables, I'd plug them together and I was reaching, you know, a maximum usage of a, a, a camera back to a CPU. Um, now I can plug 20 of them together and it doesn't make a difference. So to answer your question, I yeah, don't, yeah, I yeah. don't <laughs> I'm not, I'm not at, I'm not splitting hairs on a little clean or a lot clean and, mm -hmm. and getting digital dropout. No, not my, not, not my personal experience. No. Okay. Thank you. Does that answer your question? Uh, yes. Yeah. I mean, we, I have the feeling we experience more problems now we using more 10 gig, but it, I can't prove it. It's some old connectors that used to be working for years, and now you put a 10 gig on it, and, and so probably more a, a problem of misalignment rather than dirt. It, 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 right. I don't think it's dirt. I think it's quality of connection. Keep in mind that, that um, over 20 years, we have refined and made such higher-end quality product. In the beginning, I, I, I've seen glass that was literally completely misaligned along lines of precision. So if I were to go back and test these unions, 
you know, they were they were three quarters of the DB of misalignment. They're two beautiful connectors. However, I'm 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 losing every one of these connectors due to old gen and new gen for quality and precision. You know, a, a, a precision cut contact versus a, a you know earlier one that you know they say it's a 125 micron with a nine micron core. However, it you know the tolerances were very poor. So okay. I don't know how long you've had things in production or maybe switching over to some APC, some angle polish stuff. But along lines of dirt, no, it's not been dirt for me. But I, I can say that um, uh, ferrules, Lyman ferrules, um, unions between them, um, that, th that is where it becomes more critical than anything else. I've had stuff in shop that I no longer use as part of a test fixture of adapters simply because they're crap. Um, they were okay in the beginning, but now, uh, after a couple of uses, they're no longer as functional as they were. So we actually throw them away. Does mm. that help? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Well, very good. Um, we're pretty much at our uh, time limit. Danny, thank you very much, as always. Thank all of you again for joining us this morning. We really appreciate it. If you have any further questions, you think of something, please give us a call um, or shoot us an email, whatever's easier for you. We'd love to hear from you and uh, hope to help you with uh, any fiber uh, issues down the road. Thank you all, everybody, and uh, have a great rest of your day.